Okay, so for this demonstration, we're going to work on creating three-step value scales for several colors. So first of all, of course, make sure to put your name, your class period, um, and all of the colors that you need are specifically labeled in each one of these boxes. And um, when it comes to the shades, I did try to label them in an order that you should use them. Um, but first of all, let's start with the hue. We're going to try and create a unique blue. So the first two colors we need are permanent blue and Copenhagen blue. Now when you're creating the hues, you don't necessarily need to put one or the other down first. That's not as important here. Um, what I like to do is create the hue and the tint kind of at the same time because really the main difference between the hue and tint is that we add white. So either we can start building those. Shade is best to do separate um, because you would create this color in a different order. Now things to remember, um, keep your pencil sharp. So it makes it a lot easier. Always make sure you're using that light pressure and the continuous circular motion with your pencil strokes. You don't have to fill in the whole box. And the reason that we layer colors instead of just using one color straight from the Prismacolor set is to get more unique colors. Right, if you're layering, you can see those other colors showing through. Okay, so with the tint, um, the only difference between the tint and the hue is that we're adding white. The white must be added last because if you were to put white underneath all this color, it really wouldn't do much. So um, you're adding that final layer and adding pressure. So this is your final step for the tint and you are still keeping those circular motions going and you are burnishing the surface so you can't add anything else on top of it afterwards. Okay, so then when it comes to the shade, I'm going to start with violet. Always light pressure. Then the permanent blue. Copenhagen blue. Indigo blue. Now this dark green is going to change it quite a bit. Okay, and then you'll go back in and you'll add more layers. Okay, when you do your final layer, make sure you're using your hue colors as that final coat on top, you could call it, um, just so that way those bring out or come out a little bit stronger than those other colors underneath. Um, you don't always necessarily need to add the same amount of each color each time, like that green really stands out. So this last third layer, I did not add any more green. Okay, so now we're ready to move on. All the other colors I will point out, there is a back or uh, more on the back of the page along with a rubric. So if you want to follow along with all of these, uh, even application color, uh, or excuse me, even application of color, accuracy of tints. Um, so those will be that you're adding with white, accuracy of tones. That's actually supposed to be the shade here, not tone. I'll fix that in my final copy. Um, and then use of dark colors in shades. Um, so you're gonna be using foundation of cool colors under your hues to create the shade and your overall craftsmanship. All right, now I'm just gonna go through and um, continue to create all of these other colors. So when you do your shades, you want to start with the cooler, darker colors to create a nice foundation um, that goes for any creating any darker values. You have to work really lightly, though. Um, if you put too much pressure of those different uh, cooler values, then, then you'll have too much of it showing through and it will alter your color too much. So work really slow, take your time. Look at how little green I'm putting down there. Super light pressure.
Remember for the final layer, or excuse me, for the last colors that you layer on top, you want to use the original colors that you use for the hue. For the yellow, I should say the yellow uh, value and the orange one that's on the back side can be a little bit tricky. Um, just to show you carefully, I'll start with the shade here. You're going to start with the violets, and it has to be super light. Otherwise, if you use too much violet, when you put that yellow on top, it's going to create a really muddy color. Uh, if you ever go through all the steps and create one color within one of the boxes and it doesn't quite turn out the way that you know it should, uh, then just use the this box over here or a little spot off to here to the side and remix that color. So I would say on average I add about three layers of all of the colors except when it comes to dark green. I feel like sometimes one or two layers of the dark green is enough just because it's so contrasting with the other colors that it's not necessary to add more layers. But um, as you build up your layers, when you start, or excuse me, when you get to your regular hue colors, um, which are also referred to as your local color, try to resist from just pressing harder um, to get it to change. You definitely are just relying on building up layers of color. So pressing harder right now is only going to make your color change less. So resist pressing harder and just build up those layers one step at a time, but always remember to finish with your local colors, which are the hue colors. Okay, so hopefully that last one you really paid attention um, but I only use like all these dark, cool colors underneath just once. Um, really, really light. And then I added all of my orange colors on top of that two or three more times. Um, also, just to note, this is not a self-scoring rubric. This is the rubric that I will use to grade your value scale. Um, again, as I mentioned previously, if you need to use this box here, either side, to redo any of the colors, the shades can sometimes be a little bit tricky, like the orange and yellow as mentioned. So just take your time, uh, be patient, work slow, make sure to always keep those cool dark colors down first, um, and then layer those hues of the local colors on top.